So this morning on Morning Joe, folks, Joe and Mika were shamelessly pummeling Lindsey Graham about a stance that uh, he had taken while he's in Ukraine right now, and he's and he's talking about a program that they they just pummeled him for. Um, but it, it's it's a lot like something that I discussed about two weeks ago, the under the premise of helping Ukraine under the FDR lend lease program, and now all of a sudden Donald Trump is talking about it, and Lindsey Graham is is now parroting uh, the same thing. It's like, you know, am, am I being, it's, I know he's not listening. I know Donald Trump is not listening to my podcast, but I'm just beginning to wonder if I'm bugged or something over here because, uh, you know, I talk about it and then, you know, Donald Trump picks it up. Something weird is, is going on, but either love Lindsay or you hate him. Right. So here's a guy that, uh, has been chased through the airport by protesters. <laughs> Would you love to see that? Um, for, you know, different things that he said. He said some wacky things, but one of the things that he seems to be pretty firm on and consistent on is his distaste for Russia and their aggression and and what they're doing to Ukraine right now, just absolutely pummeling, killing people uh, in Ukraine in this this war that's been going on for three years now that, that really is not going to stop until, uh, especially since Putin sees that they're not getting the weapons that they need, He's going to continue this war until they get the weapons. That's the only thing he respects. So what is Lindsey Graham doing in Ukraine, folks? So have a look at this. So Lindsey is in Ukraine, and he's telling Ukrainian parliamentarians to pass a mobilization bill. So Ukraine is trying to pass a bill to uh, enlist or draft men under the age of 25 uh, to continue this fight. So they're, they're trying to get this mobilization bill passed, and Lindsey Graham is lobbying parliamentarians to do just that. But the strange thing is, he's as this poster says, he's not in Washington telling Mike Johnson to pass a security bill. And keep in mind that just about a month ago, he voted against Ukraine aid because it was tied with the, the border, the bipartisan border bill that James Lankford, uh, who's a Republican, actually helped broker uh, and I don't want to get started on that tangent because here's a deal that would have actually helped immigration ASAP and it would, would have been the first true legislation that would have been able to do that. And everybody says, well, why can't Biden just do an executive act or whatnot? You need legislation to address this issue. It would have worked and it would have done it, but they voted obviously not to do it. So Ukraine was tied in with that so they don't get any funding. Long story made short. So... He was in Ukraine. Lindsey Graham is in Ukraine, and he actually met with Zelensky, if you can imagine that, after that vote that he just cast last month, right, to not give support to Ukraine. But here's what he said, folks. Have a listen to this. Uh, future support, so thanks. Welcome. We'll talk about all of the above, but before we say anything, I just admire what you and your people have been able to do for two years. I remember we were told he would fall in four weeks. We're still here, still fighting. Um, Putin won in a landslide. <laughs> you know why he got 87 votes percent? Because I guess he didn't want 88, that would look bad. <laughs> so this is the 10th anniversary of the annexation of Crimea. So better days ahead for the people of uh, Ukraine. And Putin will go down in history the way all the people like Putin go down in history. Just a matter of time. So what he's proposing, folks, is this. Um, and here's the tweet that he put out. <clears throat> Let me read that to you. So Lindsay says, I had a very productive visit with President Zelensky and other Ukrainian officials about the state of the war and what lies ahead. During my meeting with President Zelensky, I informed them him that given the crisis at the United States' southern border and her overwhelming debt, President Trump's idea of turning aid from the United States into a no-interest, waivable loan is the most likely path forward. This is not only true for aid for Ukraine, but other countries across the board. I reiterated that the House's Ukraine aid legislation must include some American border security provisions. So that's why he didn't vote for the bill. 
that was out there to help Ukraine because it's tied with the border. I'm also urging the Biden administration to send longer range artillery, accelerate F-16 training for the Ukrainians, and designate Russia a state sponsor of terrorism under U.S. law. Once Ukraine gets back on its feet, they will be an economic powerhouse because of their access to mass deposits of critical minerals, oil, and gas. He goes on. So, folks, what are the what are we talking about here? We're talking about something that's sort of like, not exactly like, but a lot like the Lend-Lease program um, that FDR was talking about. So let's take a look at that. Even the most conservative Wall Street Journal has said that the Russian assets that have been seized abroad, of which there are over $300 billion worth, should be used today to support Ukraine. And and I believe this. I've I've talked about this. Um, and here's that article. Take a look. So the Wall Street Journal is saying this. It's time to seize Russia's reserves. Ukraine needs the money. What is Biden waiting for? The White House is promising tough new sanctions on Russia after the murder of opposition leader Alexei Navalny. But the test of seriousness will be whether President Biden is willing to seize Russia's sovereign assets and transfer them to the Ukraine. Again, about $300 billion worth. Even the most conservative of conservatives, the Wall Street Journal editorial board, is for doing this. And there's some interesting um, details about this Lend-Lease program um, that was enacted by FDR during World War II. It was formally called the Lend-Lease Act. It was enacted March 11th of 1941. It was a policy under which the United States supplied the United Kingdom, Soviet Union, France, Republic of China, a lot of these countries, with food, oil, and materiel between 1941 and 1945. The aid was given free of charge on the basis that such help was essential for the defense of the United States. Now, one thing you probably don't know, and I didn't either, was that the Soviet Union actually got $10.8 billion in aid and how much do you think they've paid back? Well, in 1971, they paid back $722 million with the remainder of the debt written off. So here we are. We saved their ass. In World War II, we loaned them almost $11 billion of support, saved their country, and now they're doing crap like this and never even paid us back. I mean... Don't get me started on Russians, especially Putin. The Russian people, I'm fine with. Putin is a problem. So the problem that FDR had, folks, was that in the 1930s, we had the Depression. We also had this sense of neutrality, uh, and there were a lot of acts that were passed in the 1930s motivated by non-interventionism. So after the aftermath of World War I, nobody wanted to get involved in World War II, and understandable. But there was this surge in isolationism, folks, which is, um, which was something that he had to confront. And the opposition to the Lend-Lease bill that FDR passed was strongest among isolationist Republicans in Congress who feared the measure would be the longest single step this nation has taken toward direct involvement in the war abroad. So here we are, our Republican friends, God love them, were anti-Lend-Lease proposal and... You know, let's face it, folks. I mean, even Wikipedia says a Lend-Lease program contributed to the Allied victory. So Republicans were wrong on one of the most major Democratic programs that literally ended World War II. And it's probably the main reason why we're not speaking German today. So, you know, FDR kind of compared it to this. He's like, if your neighbor's house is on fire and you've got a, a garden hose, you're not going to say to your neighbor, hey, before you try to put out your fire at your house. I want 15 bucks. You're going to loan the hose to them. And then you have the expectation that you'll get the hose back after the fire is over. So the premise here, folks, is ultimately Ukraine needs their help. They're, they're fighting this unbelievable war of aggression from the Soviet Union. And they've been doing a damn fine job of it, to be honest. Um, They've been doing a damn fine job of fighting the Russians back, given how small they are and how huge Russia portrays themselves to be. A nuclear power, for God's sakes. 
So they deserve our support in this. They will be a contributor to the world economy. Ukraine will, <clears throat> once we get through this. And it's a situation where they've got the money, right? They've got the Russian assets that they're going to get. Why don't we loan them the material that they need today so that they can fight tomorrow? Makes total sense. <clears throat> but I still don't get how Donald Trump is talking about something that I talked about. Um, you know, it's like, I know he's not watching my show, right? Especially after that satire piece that I did with his, um, you know, depends and all that, this kind of crap. So I know he's not watching me, but, uh, beginning to wonder if I'm bugged till then folks, something to think about.